What if I tell you that all the money that you've spent on digital marketing pretty much went down the drain and that your digital marketing agency has been lying to you all along and everything is BS? Well, I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna explain why this is happening and why you're not getting the results that you want from your digital marketing agency. But first things first, my name is Manuel Leon and I am a digital marketing strategist and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time you come, welcome. If this is your second or third or fourth time, welcome back, settle in because I'm about to give you a ton of useful information about digital marketing and how to build your online presence successfully and effectively. But first things first, make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button, click the notification bell in order to never miss a single video. There is a new video every single Tuesday. Like this video, comment in the comment box below and share, share, share. Now let's get to business. Something I've seen lately, well for a while already, but lately more, is the fact that there are these so-called digital marketing experts or digital marketing agencies popping up everywhere. And the reason for that is because it's a relatively easy industry to get in, right? So you can get some education online or from YouTube or whatever. You can work from anywhere in the world. All you need is an internet connection. You don't need a lot of capital money to start your agency. And basically, that's it. If you know how to speak English, voila, you have a marketing agency. But that's what they want you to believe. That, and it has been like that for a long time in this industry, not only with digital marketing, but with websites, like things like Wix that say to you, oh, build your website, one, two, three. And those things are great for, for small mom and pop shops, or if you, I don't know, if you're a mom uh, selling cupcakes in the neighborhood, or if you want to digitalize your lemonade stand and you are 12 years old. But the reality is that a Wix website or a so-called new digital marketing agency are not gonna get you the results that you're looking for and they're not gonna take your online presence where it needs to be. So, without further ado, let's get to those red flags. Now, the first one is strategy and I've talked about this a lot of times in my previous videos. You have to have a strategy. So, the first red flag that you see when someone is not a full professional but they're someone who are empirical, they got their digital marketing degree from a YouTube course that lasted 30 days or something like that, is the fact that they don't present you with a strategy. If the first step they take when you hire them is not telling you, hey, let's get together so we can have a meeting, a discovery meeting, so I can understand you, I can understand about your business, I can understand about your audience and your target market, uh, so I can craft a strategy before starting producing content like crazy. If that's not the first step, run. They're not the right agency for you. Because content, anybody can create content. Long past are the days where you needed to be an actual graphic designer in order to be able to handle Photoshop, Illustrator, and come up with amazing graphics and amazing flyers and social media posts. Yes, that still happens, that's still important. I am a graphic designer, and obviously if you are someone who is trained in, in this work, you can go so much farther, so much easier. But the reality is you don't need to be a graphic designer anymore. You don't have to have Illustrator. You don't have to have Photoshop. You don't have to be a super design pro in order to produce nice looking, effective um, social media posts or graphics or set up campaigns. But you do have to have at least the experience and you have to have the knowledge of the strategy, the purpose. So the first thing is, if there's no strategy, there's no purpose. If there's no purpose, you're just shooting bullets up in the air. There is no path that that content needs to follow in order to bring you the results that you want it to bring. Now, the second red flag is the fact that they don't even have an education or experience. And I get it, I get it. Nowadays, having a former uh, a formal college, no, no, not a formal, a formal college education is not as important for some sort of niches or some sort of careers, or you can have some technical education, and that's great. But the reality is that 
If you don't have the full on education, and even if you do, it needs to go along with some experience or something to show. So as soon as you hire them or when you're in the process of hiring an agency, you should ask them, hey, what is your background, your education background? Did you went to school for communications, for marketing, for public relations, for digital media? What is your actual background? And after that question, the second question is, how long have you been working in this field of work? Because they might tell you, you know what? I just went to school three years for getting a, a, a technical degree on communications and I don't really have a bachelor or I don't have a PhD, I don't have much formal education, but guess what? I have 10 years of experience working in the industry and I know what I'm doing. So that's a good thing. And if they say something like that, then they should be able to show you. You can ask them, hey, okay, so do you have some strategies? Do you have some campaigns? Do you have some results? But don't let them just show you something quick, be like, oh yes, I did this and this and this. No, no, no. Tell me, do you have an example, a case study, a result of something that you've done in the past with your experience? If they don't have those things, or if they appear to be hesitant or shady about those things, that's another red flag, something you must consider. They either have to have the formal education or the education, the experience and the proof, and ideally all of them. So that's the next, that's the second flag. Now, the third flag is KPIs, right? Uh, this one client that I just talked to you guys about comes and tells me, by the way, it's very important for me that you tell me what KPIs do you measure and how you measure them. For me, it's super important to measure the followers and the likes and the followers likes ratio on social media. And as so I think, I was like, okay, I know already for a fact that someone put that idea, that number, that that turn in her head. And I'm glad that she wants to get involved because like I've said many times, you as a business owner, you as an entrepreneur, you as the owner of your brand, you need to be involved in this process. It is a collaborative process. Unless you work in a department or you have your own agency in, in house that only takes care of you, then you have to be involved because I cannot leave the day-to-day -day operations of every single client I have. And for social media, that's important. For digital marketing, that's important. For online presence, that's important. That there's this human aspect of the company or, or the brand or the entrepreneur. I can only do so much without the collaboration of my clients. So I make sure that I tell all my clients that they have to be involved and they all are. I speak or exchange some sort of communication with every single of my clients and they're quiet at least once a week because I want them to be involved in the entire process in order to achieve the goals that we set up in the strategy. Now, this person comes and tells me this about KPIs, likes and followers. Guess what? Likes and followers are not always the KPI that you want to measure. That's going to be dictated by your strategy. So in your strategy, if you set up the fact that KPIs are going to be likes and followers, awesome, because it goes along with the purpose of your campaign. But for some, per for, for some people, for some ty different types of strategies, uh, maybe the share is the KPI that we want to measure. Maybe signups or maybe downloads of a resource or a document or maybe phone calls. So there are many, many, many KPIs that can be measured in many different ways. So if you hear someone telling you something like, hey, you know, you need to have a lot of followers. Oh, yes, but it really depends what type of followers. Or I can get you X amount of followers in X amount of time, or I can get you X amount of likes in X amount of time. Guess what? They are lying. They are lying because they're pretty much selling you air. They're selling you things that are pre-bought. Pre you can buy followers, you can buy likes. And that's a big no-no for any social media channel or any social media platform. But if you don't know that, they might be selling you these things and you're like completely oblivious about it. It's not about 
only the amount of followers and amount of likes or the KPI itself is about the quality of your audience and how you build that audience what matters because those are the ones that are going to bring you the results and the leads and the profit that you want for your business. And the final, final red flag that you should take into consideration when you hire these so-called experts and, and in the industry or agency, expert agencies, is the fact that they don't want you involved. And I just spoke about it. In our agency, we try to involve our clients as much as possible because it's important for them to learn, to get educated. And I know it's not about being jealous of the work. It's not about, oh, I'm not going to teach you how I'm doing this or what am I doing because I don't want you to fire me and then do it on your own. Yes, those things happen sometimes, but it's not about that. You have to make sure you give your clients uh, all the information that they need to understand what you're actually doing. And you as a client, you need to understand what your agency is doing for your online presence. You wouldn't leave your, uh, your, your, your body or your face in the hands of someone, your identity in the hands of someone who you don't know what they're gonna do with that. It's like grabbing your social security card and handing it to some random person without a clue of what could happen. So it's basically the same with your online presence and your branding. It's your company, it's your baby, it's your entrepreneur uh, dream. So make sure you get involved. And when they don't want you involved, that's a big red flag. Whenever you start asking questions like, hey, why are you doing that? Or can you explain me the process of this? Or can you provide me with a report for that? Can you give me a report for the traffic? Can you give me a report for the social media? Can you show me the analytics? Can you understand the information that we're tracking? Um, when they start being hesitant about that information and when they start having this attitude of, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. You don't need to know about it. Don't ask many questions or is my way or no way. You're the client. I'm the, the one who knows better. and you don't know about this, just let us do what we do and don't worry about asking questions. That is a big, big, big red flag. Because you can tell your clients, hey, you know what, I think, or, or, or we're sure this is the best approach, this is the better strategy in order to do this, that we want to achieve this goal. And we are the experts and it's our job to tell you, the client, how we're gonna take that approach. And you can say, Oh, okay, great, now I understand, I understand the process, I understand how it works, I'm good with it. But if we don't give you that information, you are completely blind. So don't be blind. If they start having this sort of attitude whenever they don't want you to be involved, that's a red flag. And also because as you get involved, the bounce back and forth of ideas is always great. I have got from my clients who do not know anything about digital marketing, some of them don't know anything. I have got some pretty awesome ideas that they say, hey, I thought about this and perhaps can we do this or can we do that? And I'm thinking, you know what? Yes, even though that doesn't apply to digital marketing, we can grab your concept and translate it into the online world and apply it this way. And they're like, oh, wow, great. And now it becomes a collaborative work. So there's no such a thing as a bad idea between you, the client, and your digital marketing agency. If they start kind of like working in a silo and not being transparent about what they're doing with your brand and about providing reports and results and processes and strategy, then it's not the agency for you. Now, once again, make sure you subscribe. I hope you use these tips in order to hire correct, effective, successful, honest, professionals and succeed with your online presence. And guess what? If you have questions, it doesn't matter if you're in Florida, in Georgia, in Tennessee, in Timbuktu, you can always shoot me a comment and I'll be happy, 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 happy to give you some insights and help you make the right decisions. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like this button and share. See you in the next video. Bye.